looking at this, you can see that we've created quite the menagerie where we mixed up all these animals into an array. And sometimes we have to unmix them to sort them back out. So the thing I want to show you today is let's say we have this array and we don't know what's in it, but we want to pick out the birds. Let's just take that as an example. Uh, now, we don't know how many birds are in here, so I'm going to take out the birds and put them in an array list since I don't know how big to make it, and the array list will be a little bit easier to use because it's a flexible size. But if you did know ahead of time how many there were, you could create an array instead. That would work also. So the goal now is to pick out the birds and put them on a separate list. So to show you how to do that, I'm going to take a step back here. And we're going to look at this scenario where we have a single pointer. And we have this animal pointer which is pointing to a bird. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask the, the, the sorry, we're going to ask the Java virtual engine, engine, virtual runtime engine, is A pointing to a bird? That's what we want to know. That's the question we want to ask it. So to do that, we're going to introduce a new operator. This operator is called instance of. It's an operator. Now, you might be wondering, how come the O is not capitalized? Because we've been using camel casing all through the year. And when do we use camel casing? What do we use it for? What types of things? Yes, sir? Like objects. Variable objects, things like that, right? That's not a variable. That's an operator. Now, looking at it, it doesn't look like an operator. But this is just as much an operator as this one or this one. Operator, operator, operator. And one of the rules that Java has in its operator, so is this also a reserved word? Like, could you make a variable out of that? What do you think? No. Can't make a variable out of that. It's a reserved word. And Java's reserved words don't use capital letters. They only use lowercase. So for all those reasons, this is all lowercase. Now, first of all, I don't think this is covered on the AP exam anymore. This is one of the few times where I teach you something that's not on the AP exam because it's kind of important. But if it was on the AP exam and you accidentally capitalized the O, they wouldn't penalize you anyway. First of all, they probably couldn't tell. Uh, secondly, they don't, capitalize for, they don't penalize for capitalization usually on the AP exam unless it creates some compiler issue. Anyway, so this is the operator that we're talking about. And the, the way you use this operator, the way you use this operator is you have to have an object over here and you have to have a class over here. And then the, when you run it, at runtime, it will tell you whether this object belongs to this class. And what do you think it will return? What data type do you think will get returned by this operator? Double, integer, what do you think? Ms. Sal, what do you think? Boolean. It's Boolean. It tells you it's going to be true or false. Now, here's the thing. If what you put over here is not an object, if what you put over here is not a class, or if the combination is such that they're not really in the same hierarchy, it will not compile. Okay, it will not compile. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to ask the question, is A pointing to a bird? So my first question is, is A an object? Yes, it's a pointer, but is it also an object? It is. So we're going to go A here, A instance of bird. So let's try that. So you can see that this compiles. And now, I'm a little surprised that this is not showing up in a different color. I'm not sure what that's about. But in any case, let's run it. And you can see that it's true. So now I'm going to give you some other examples of this. And I would like you to get together with your partner and say, is it going to be true? Is it going to be false? Or is it not going to compile? Those are your choices. So let's take this sentence right here, this line, and let's repeat it. We'll just start with these. Please look through each of these and ask yourselves, will it return true? Will it return false, or will it not compile? All right, let's see if we can get together and decide how each of these are. I think this one we already did for you, and we decided it does compile. And then when we run it, we can see that the answer is true. 
So the next one I'm going to look at is this one. And what I'd like to know is true, false, or won't compile? Who wants to take a whack at it? Ms. Massone, that's just half the problem, Miss. There are actually two compiler errors here. You've already mentioned one of them. Can someone mention the other one, Ms. Malhotra? N and n is not an object. So therefore, you can see they both cause compiler errors. So that's no good. So this one was true, and this one, two compiler errors. Now let's look at this one. D instance of bird. What do you think about that? You can see that this one doesn't compile. And I'm guessing some of you are confused by that. So I'd like you to discuss it with your partner to see if you can unconfuse yourself. Bird, part of the inheritance hierarchy of this D class here. What is the class for D? D is a cat class. If I go up the cat class hierarchy, do I ever hit bird? I do not. This is some sort of uncle class or something like that. So this does not work. So this D can never point to a bird. So therefore, the compiler is telling you that, why are you even asking me? So this will not compile. Let's look at this one now. E instance of cat. Question, is it pointing to a cat or not? First of all, will it compile? What do you think here? Miss Siegel, what's your gut telling you? Is it going to compile? It will compile. So you can see that compiles fine. And when I run it, Miss Siegel, is it true or false? You can see that it's true. If you don't understand why, just ask yourself, does E have an is a relationship with this class? Is E, uh, is it a cat? It is a cat. It's a special type of cat, but it's still a cat. So you can see that that's true. So this one is true. This one will not compile. And now the last one, E instance of animal. What do you think here? Mr. Orespaev, what do you think? It will compile, it will compile sir. And what, when I run it, will it be true or false? It will be true. OK, so you can see that that part is true. So now, I would like to review for you today everything that we've learned. And I want to mention to you that this instance of will not be on your quizzes, on your test, or on the AP exam. It's one of the rare things that I'm teaching you that's not going to be on your test because you just need to know this in order to be a well-rounded Java developer. What will be on your test? Everything else we discussed today. What points to what? That's important. Heterogeneous arrays. You might get one or two multiple choice questions on that at most. Won't be heavily covered, but it is covered. Okay.